Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about Lights and Coloring Characters in Clip Studio Paint, presented by Seo Ray. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. There will be a Q&A session during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. You can use also uh, the question panel to send your questions. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all the questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recorder will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, and Seo Ray. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Also, uh, we'll invite you to share your Instagram stories, tagging us at as hashtag webinar, at sayoray, at graphicsly, at wacom, and at Clip Studio official. We'll be sharing your stories. Seo Ray is an illustrator from Romania with a passion for bringing magical characters to life. She draws in a variety of styles and mediums, but mostly gravitate toward anime and semi-realism using digital and traditional methods. Over the last few months, Say started being more active on social media by posting art, tutorials, and resources for the fellow art community. Every Sunday, she also organized a future artist post, uh, post of her in, on Instagram for brilliant underrated artists. So with that, I will leave you with Say and her webinar, Lights and Coloring Characters in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. Thank you for coming to my webinar and uh, thank you Mario and Graphicsly for hosting. In case it's your first time meeting me, I'm uh, Alice and you might also know me by my online handle, Sarai, and I'm an artist and an illustrator. I enjoy drawing magical and colorful characters and mostly I use a semi-realistic style or an anime style. And you can find my work online on social media platforms like uh, Instagram and Twitter or X, uh, Facebook, and also YouTube, where I upload speed paintings and process videos. So, boring introductions aside, uh, Mario here from Graphicsy has invited me to talk about a topic I really, really love and about which I personally have found relatively few resources online and that is lighting. Now, I can totally hear some of you um, asking why is lighting of any importance, right? Like there's anatomy and perspective and others, and they're the pain of any artist's life. But honestly, in my opinion, light is actually more important than either of those two. It's It's important to focus on the light. It just makes art come to life, it guides the eyes, it sets the mood, and it gives the drawing that wow factor that makes it stand out. So uh, yeah, I, I believe that it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner artist or a professional one, I just think that improving your knowledge of color and light will be of huge help. So that being said, uh, let's see this in practice. I uh, prepared some files for you all. Um, there's a lead file and the brushes that we're going to use today. Of course, these are all optional. You can just watch the video, but if you want to use them, uh, you'll be able to follow along easily. Um, so we're working in Clip Studio Paint today, but these techniques can be easily applied in any drawing software. So uh, 
yeah i'm um, also assuming you have some knowledge of drawing digitally uh, regardless of the software used so this will not be a complete beginner uh, beginner webinar so let's see this will be the document that we're gonna be working on and we're gonna be using my free brushes which you can download um, we're mostly going to be using uh, the sketch and the um, the blending and the glow brushes today but you are welcome to look through them and experiment with them because there is a bunch of brushes in there um, and we're also going to be using the lasso tool today you might be familiar with it and Mm, the gradient tool, we're going to be using it as well. Kind of like that. So, well, before we start, there's actually a couple things that we should talk about, as in the types of light, for example. Like, we want to draw light, but what types of light are there? So, first off, we have the neutral, the amb ambient light. That's the light that we see everywhere around us. It's, well, it mostly comes from the sun or the moon, but um, it's reflected by the, the sky all around us. That's what we call the ambient light. It kind of provides the main general light in the scene, and we can see it on the flat colors that we put in initially. Like if we look at this drawing, for example, we can see the flat colors. But imagine if there was no light at all, it would be just darkness. It would be just silhouettes. So that's what the ambient, amb I can't work today. <laughs> that's what the ambient light kind of helps us. So think of it this way. We have the ambient light and then we have another type of light the direct light. That's the light coming from the main light source. Um, that's, let's say, the sun or a light bulb or a candle. It's the brightest light in the scene and it provides the main lighting in the scene and it's usually neutral in color. Like think the sun, a light bulb, as I said before. You can think of this direct light as a spotlight that illuminates your character from one direction. Let's see how this translates into a simple volume sphere. There we go. So now we have just a black circle. Let's say that the ambient light hits it and then there's a gray circle. It's not just a silhouette anymore. It's a gray circle. Right, but then we get the direct light. Let's assume that the light comes in from the left side and you will notice that the sphere will be more illuminated closer to the light source. And then as the light tends to fade off, we get less and less illumination. So that's how we approach the direct light. Next would be the bounce light. 
That's the third type of light. That's the indirect light that we get. And that's the light reflected onto your main character or objects by the objects in the environment. So for example, let's say that we have a red tablecloth, right? We have a red tablecloth and although the main light hits the ball from the top left, when hitting the red tablecloth, it will become tinted red. And then the tablecloth will reflect some of the light back onto our ball or character or whatever it is. And it will tint red our ball in the areas that it hits. So for example, like, oh, too much, like this. It's a bit too strong. So as you see, now we have the bounce light. Now, why is the bounce light important? Because this type of light, it's usually used by more advanced artists to give volume to their shapes and enhance the mood. The trick here is to keep a combination of cool and warm colors. So if your main light is a warm one, do cool colors for your bounce light and the other way around. So if your main light is a cool one, switch it up and do warm bounce light instead, and that will give your colors an eye-catching dynamism. That being said, let's move on to the rim light. And again, it's a more advanced trick that you can start actually using today even if whether you're advanced or professional, um, you're a beginner or a professional, you can use this. And this type of light effect appears when the illumination in the scene hits the character mostly from behind or a side, creating a sharp, bright outline, as you can see here. And the last type of light would be the subsurface scattering or SSS for short. And this is honestly one of my personal favorites and it appears when light passes through a translucent material, think skin for example, and some of it is scattered within that material and our eyes see that. Basically it gives like a slight tint to, to the transition between the light and the shadow and it's what makes your fingers glow pink um, when put under a flashlight and it kind of gives a very nice peachy tone to the whole illustration. As we can see here in the examples I prepared, this is the SSS, the subsurface scattering. It's this lovely glow that we can see where the shadow ends, the light ends, and in between, there is a transition. Over here, I'm hoping that the image quality in the video can, uh, can capture this. Over here, we can actually see how it looks with subsurface scattering off. It kind of looks plasticky, doesn't it? And then with it turned on, well, it, it looks way more lively and, you know, human. Now, there's many ways you can do this. And we'll go, uh, we'll go through this around the end of the webinar. But um, I will teach you how to make um, two types, two methods of sub, uh, subsurface scattering. Um, yeah, that being said, let's move on to values. That is another thing we must know before moving on to actually drawing. Um, why are values important? Because 
a lot of the time, there's, in any good art, there's a focal point. Think of it this way, like, you're in a video game and you see one particular character bathed in light. It's, it's obvious that the developers want you to approach that character. Like it might give you a quest or provide something important in game. So just like this, the human eye tends to be attracted to areas that are brighter. So by using brighter tones and more detailed shapes in the areas of the piece that we want to emphasize, we will attract the eye to the important parts, while the unimportant details will be left in the shadow. Um, one really awesome example of this is the art of, and I might butcher this, Gouwes. I think I'm, I'm butchering this. <laughs> Sorry. But look at their use of values. It's it's really amazing. Like let's turn the saturation down. And you can see here, you can see how they use values to attract the eye to the important parts of the image. It's amazing the mastery of this technique that Gouwes has. And they managed to create such a mood in every piece using mostly just values, basically. <laughs> well, with that being said, it's also a good idea to check your values while working on a piece um, because it kind of helps you see if there's uh, a lack of balance uh, in contrast, for example. And to do this in a non-destructive way, you can add a zero saturation layer on top of everything, kind of like what we just did now. And you can turn that on and off at any point, and it's non-destructive. Otherwise, you'd have to flatten everything and desaturate everything. All right, that being said, let's move on to the next step. And that is the last step before we actually get to draw. And I know you're all waiting for that. Uh, but I think this step is very important. And that is learning how to simplify. Because we're familiar with the other topics that we covered. But if we don't learn to simplify our lighting, we're going to get overwhelmed, like real fast. Here are a few references that I found from Andrew Lester on ArtStation. Um, you, can, uh, you can go uh, check them out yourself. Um, in all these references, you can see how Andrew uses gray and white to create the illusion of volume and create the lighting scenarios. It basically creates the whole mood just with gray and white. And this is basically the idea that you have to have in your mind when dissecting the lights in your scene. As I said, otherwise you will get overwhelmed fast. So the way that you do this is by defining your light source, its intensity, and the direction that it hits from. As you can see in these examples here, he always has this red arrow that points to where the light is coming from. And we can judge the intensity by how much of this sketch head <laughs> is being illuminated. Now, a neat trick that helped me out a lot when I started learning how to do this was using a 3D tool. 
such as uh, Clip Studio Paints Renderer or a free tool like Blender or Magic Poser. And I was able to roughly create my object or import an existing model in the scene and set the lighting. And then you can easily position the camera, render the resulting grayscale, and you'll have the perfect light and volume reference. As you can see here, these are some examples that I rendered in Blender. Uh, and from here, you can see how the light hits various parts of the face or body over here. And here's the trick. You can use the lasso tool to simplify this and use this as a reference. So, say we have this head, all right? Now, I made just a gray silhouette, but if we go back, and we select the areas that are hit by the light in our render. You will see how this method can actually be applied. Now I'm doing this roughly because of time constraints, obviously, but uh, of course you can do it in a more detailed and refined way. All right, now we have the selection and what do we do with it? We take the gradient tool and set it to a light gray and we drag. Let's make this a clipping mask. And you can already see, although it was like a rough, sketchy thing on my part, you can already see how there's light defined and shape defined. And that's how we simplify the light in a scene. And you can do this with a photo, you can do this with a 3D render, you can do this with anything. So now that we know all that, let's actually do some drawing shall we uh, for those of you that have the document open the document that i provided open you can um you can open it and we can start drawing let's say that in this scene our light will come some of you might know already <laughs> this drawing and where the light comes from uh, let's say that the light comes from oops, comes from the top left, like this. So this is where our main light source is coming from. Let's make a new layer and using the lasso tool, Let's trace the selection for our light. And then with the gradient tool, foreground transparent, as you can see here, we can drag and fill this with our color of choice. And as you can see here, it already looks better than the flat color. Now, of course, we can blend the edges here with a blend tool. And I've also prepared the features on a different layer. And already our face is starting to take shape.
Now, using a soft airbrush that you can find in the brushes, let's select the brush, uh, the blush color. And lightly blush the cheeks and the forehead and the chin, the places where you can usually get more redness on a face. There is also, um, you'll probably notice there is also the blush layer. But we're doing it live. All right. And next, we can look into the shadow using the same technique with the lasso tool. We can select the areas where the shadow would be. And I started here with the, um, with the shadow cast by the hair. But of course, you can start in any area that you want. You can also do this using a uh, normal brush and just brush around. But in my experience, the lasso tool is more time effective. And it's also a matter of uh, personal preference, I suppose. And let's set this to a multiply. Blending mode. And you can use the gradient tool to fill this in, or alternatively, you can use the same airbrush that we used before and fill in with the airbrush. Let's turn down the opacity a little bit because it's way too dark. And we can name this hair shadow. Now this is not the only type of shadow that we're going to have on the face because as you can see the light is coming in from the top left but um, that means that the bottom right will of course be in shadow so that means that we can take either the gradient tool or the brush whichever and on a new layer we can uh, brush around, I'll use the brush, we can brush the shadow, the main shadow. And that already gives us a pretty okay face if we hide the sketch layer like I just forgot to do. Now let's move on to the hair, which is still flat as you can see. Now the light is coming in from the top left and you can see here I already prepared some layers for you. But as I said, we're doing this live. So let's make a new layer and name it light. And with the lasso tool, as you can see, these areas here towards the light, let's select them. And we can use the brush and the gradient tool or the gradient tool to fill in the selection.
and then the blend tool to blend it in. You can repeat this as many times as you need for the different uh, um, angles of the light and the different strands. And now to time, uh, due to time constraints, I'll just uh, move on to uh, the texture and the shadow. Um, I'm a firm believer that adding textures to your drawing really enhances it. So let's add this. This is a texture that I prepared beforehand. And you can see it's in overlay mode. And to make the hair look more lively, you can make a new layer on top of every other layer. And using a fine brush, you can brush strands. And this will really, really make your hair pop. For brushing the strands, I would say use the hair base slash sketch brush. Because I made this one precisely for hair strands. Now we have this basic drawing, because it's not by far a finished drawing, but um, it's a good base. But how do we spice it up? Because we we can't we can't finish the drawing at this stage. We need to spice it up a little bit. Let's do that using the curves feature. Now, with this decent drawing, the curves are going to add the juicy part. Like a lot of you have been asking me, especially on my Instagram, how I do my color effects in my drawings. So that's what we're going to be uh, what we're going to be covering next. Aside from the obvious part where half the time I have no idea what I'm doing and just pray to the gods of sweet potatoes, it turns out right. Um, I have my few go to tools that help me achieve my coloring effects. And one of them is the curves function. Again, this is available in any major art software. Um, so yeah, you can you can do it in any software you are working with, probably, I hope. Um, so let's do one, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's go with the cups. Uh, let's duplicate these two layers because we don't want to be destructive. We don't want to use destructive techniques and blend them in one and we can work on this one just in case we, we yeah we break something um the curves function in clip studio paint can be accessed uh, by right click and new correction layer tone curve the curves function works in four channels the RGB that you can see here, and the, the R, G, and B separately, the red, green, and blue. But let's try the RGB first, the main one. You'll see this line here, and to the right side, we have the lightest color. To the left, the darkest. Like if I pull down the bottom right corner, it will dim everything, but at the same time, if I drag the bottom left corner up, it will make everything glowy, shiny. <laughs> it lightens all the shadows. 
when you click on the line itself, you'll notice that little anchor points appear, see? Like, just like this. And you can move them around. Let's try and experiment with this. Like, I have no, um, I have no fixed formula for this. I experiment probably 20 to 30 minutes um, on this step alone. I spend experimenting with uh, with the curves in all the four modes. So let's say something like this. Of course, this is way too strong. So let's experiment with a blending mode. Um, I usually use soft light or hue or color, but as I said, you need to experiment a lot. Let's try the hue one, because it has like a sort of an interesting effect here, as you can see. But obviously it's way too strong, so we need to tone it down. And we can use the eraser tool to erase the parts that we don't feel very fond of, you know. And of course, see, this affects sort of the hair here and the skin here, but we can use um, the same thing. We can make another tone curve. Just like this. And we can make different uh, adjustment layers, different curve layers on different uh, blending modes for the different parts that we want effects on. Yeah, let's try the pin light. It looks okay. Again, we can erase the parts that we don't feel good about. And this is basically the idea behind it. As I said, I spend at least half an hour just on this step, so don't expect to get great results in a minute or two. Now, you can do this separately for different elements of the drawing, the face, the hair, the clothes, and you'll see it puts like a lovely color variation and makes the drawing pop more. But aside from this, there's yet another trick you can use, and that is to add a glow. Let's hide the tone curves for now, because honestly, they're not that great, but I just use them uh, to show you how to achieve the coloring effect. They just need more tinkering with. Um, so let's use uh, this layer to spice things up a bit with the glow. Because, I mean, who doesn't like shiny? Well, probably Wednesday Adams, but we're just going to side with Enid on this one, okay? So there's two ways, uh, as I said in the beginning of the webinar, you, there's two ways we can do this. And I'll show you both ways and you can pick your favorite. The first one implies flattening the whole picture on a topmost layer, while the second one is a bit more flexible. So let's start with the first one. Let's um, work on this already merged layer. And from the brushes, we can pick the one named Glow. You will notice that it's a soft, round brush, and its blending mode it's, is set to Add Glow. You can use Add, you can use Glow Dodge, you can use Color Dodge or Screen, but mostly just use Add, um, add and Dodge uh, modes. 
on a soft brush. And next, just select your working color to be a nice orange. I'm saying orange because our light source is, let's say, the sun. It's a neutral one. And we're working with skin. If we had like a blue light, for example, a blue light source, we would be choosing blue or a hue of blue. All right. And with a decently big brush, we can brush away. Hold on, it's way too strong. All right. If you notice, it makes everything glow and it gives us precisely that subsurface scattering that we were talking about in the beginning, the transition between uh, the light and the dark over here. And we can do the same thing for the hair. This is way too strong of a light. But you get the idea. Let's make it a bit more gentle. There we go. Something like that. All right, now the second method. The second method is a bit more flexible and it also gives you a nice exterior glow. To achieve that, make a new layer. Let's hide this one. Make a new layer on top of everything else and we can fill it with black, just black, just pure black. And next, we're going to be taking the brush again with our nice glow brush and set our working color to an orange. Going back to the layers palette, let's set this black layer thing to an add mode. Uh, it can also be a screen mode, a color dodge mode, whatever looks better. I usually use the add one, the add glow one, but you can use any mode that looks good on your picture. And with the brush that we just, uh, we just set, let's just brush away lightly. And you can see, as opposed to the first method, this method also gives you an exterior glow. The other one, it didn't. As you can see, it just gave us the inside glow. But with the new method, we get the outside glow as well. It kind of makes it a little bit magical, don't you think? There we go, that's better. Now we can go around the nose as well for that juicy subsurface scattering that we love and the same for the hair that's too strong there we go basically we get the similar effect as we did with the first method but now the glow extend out, extends outside the bounds of the colored area and basically gives a nicer effect. Of course, we can try this with lighten or screen. It kind of softens the glow a bit. It's color dodge. It's color dodge time. I'm channeling my inner rostros. <laughs> uh, glow dodge. And we're back to add glow. You can lower the opacity a bit until we feel happy about it. And yeah, that's how you add glow. And before we finish, I have one more trick up my sleeve. 
And that's the rainbow effect. And we're going to cover this real fast. Um, this is the last way to add a color variation that we're going to cover in this webinar to your art. And this has a lot to do with adding textures. Like I highly recommend experimenting with texture overlays. They can make, take a relatively flat drawing and really make it pop. Like they provide organic variation and make the drawing less artificial and more appealing to the eyes. Like you will see in the project files, we have this rainbow texture. Let's make it visible. Yes, it's some rainbow, but let's see how to use it. Let's take the lasso tool and select one of them and copy and paste. Let's hide the other ones, deselect. And then we're going to place it somewhere we want it to be and transform it a little bit. Let's say we want it to be right here. Now it looks not that good right now, but, but we get to experiment with blending modes. Let's try and add glow. Or we can also use a color or a hue. Let's go back to the add glow one for now. Let's see how that works. Mm. Actually, the color torch doesn't look that bad. And of course, we can erase and lower the opacity a bit, and that's a way to add interesting hues to your drawing. Now, I can also show you the way I put this into use in my last illustration, the Aquarius. Let's make all of this invisible. That's a rainbow. So I basically painted the, the hair itself and then flattened everything and added a few textures. These are bubble brushes, more bubble brushes, some fishies. So I wanted to have her hair sort of like an aquarium because Aquarius, yay. Some more textures and fish and then we went into the curves as you can see here the first curves that's the curve that I used and I load the opacity a bit and put it on saturation mode and it already enhances the colors, more, more curves <laughs> and some color balance, more curves, <laughs> just enhancing those colors more and more. And then I used a texture. This is put on divide. This is a texture downloaded from, uh, from Freepik, if I'm not mistaken. And this is how it looks in its normal form, but set it on divide, on the uh, blending mode divide, and then add a mask to it, masking some of the parts. And it gives this lovely color variation. To that, you can add the strands of hair, some magical modes and more bubbles, some magical stars in the hair and we get to the rainbow that we just covered now and which now you have if you downloaded the files and as you can see it really makes the hair pop and that's how I made the hair in my Aquarius illustration and I think that's about it because we are running out of time um, I hope I was able to show you how important light is in your drawings and I hope you learned something today. I think light gives 
everything volume and and life and make makes everything pop um yeah if you have any questions let me know and mario here is going to play the messenger and shoot them my way and thank you very much for attending well thank you so much alice this has been an amazing webinar everybody's really happy and so yeah thank you and thank you all who are watching us live uh, we asked for the first time um from which part of the world were you watching so thanks to angelo from netherlands asia denmark nakasi canada jessica germany morgan northern california francesca from italy nadia from argentina jan from mexico zara from iran uh, well thank you all guatemala javier rye england etc uh, etc et so thank you all who dropped your messages using the question panel and so let's start with one question uh, amelia asks what brush do you use for the rainbow effect uh for the rainbow effect i don't use a brush um i think you're you're talking about the rainbow texture i i hope this one yes yes uh, i just use the rainbow texture let me show you again let's just take the rainbow texture select it and copy paste place it wherever you want it to be there we go and now use blending modes to add color variation and you can lower the opacity and with the eraser tool delete as you see fit and you can see there's the color variation mm -hmm. so it's just a texture it's not a brush uh, mm -hmm. for when we use brushes we use the glow brush and that's for the glow but for the rainbow texture we just use the texture mm -hmm. Um, another question from uh, Monique. Uh, how do you use multiple references without confusing the lighting? Um, honestly, I just use one reference for the lighting usually um, and then build on that from just my mind, um, mostly. So I don't really use a lot of references when it comes to that, precisely because it would confuse the heck out of me. <laughs> so yeah, to avoid that, um, I kind of tend to stick to one max two light references and then fill in the blanks um, as I see fit to make the, the illustration work. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing, um, you know, a photo in reality, and then it's another thing, fantasy and um, and light in a fantasy setting. Mm -hmm. Another question from Fenya: How long have you been drawing? Um, a, a, a long, a long time, probably <laughs> like fifteen years. Or more something like that mm -hmm. but i first started drawing um i don't know i think i was like nine years old or something and i started drawing uh, just anime stuff um pencil and paper and um later transitioned to digital using a mouse and that was another story in itself it was fun drawing hair with a mouse. It, it was fun. No, it wasn't really. Um, and then, uh, then I got my first tablet and just went from there. Mm -hmm. um, here's another one from Africa Henderson. Can you suggest some conventional color combinations or palettes that artists might explore in Clip Studio Paint? Uh, to break away from the traditional representations and bring a fresh artistic perspective to darker tone characters? I'm not sure I understand the question. Can you say yeah, that it's, again? It's, 
<laughs> yeah, it's a long question, but it's about suggesting like a conventional color combination or palettes uh, for characters that are not uh, that are have a more a darker tone skin. Uh, if if the skins of the character uh, is uh, is something you 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 check when you you glow in and like yeah um honestly i think that violet uh like purple works amazing with darker skin like i just i keep wanting to draw a character with darker skin maybe i'll just do it on my next uh, zodiac illustration and just go wild with the lighting um, I think uh, shades of uh, of purple and blue, like electric blue, work wonders on darker skin. And if you have like a rim light, um, like a magenta rim light, for example, to contrast that and you and uh, give like a warmer tone to the whole thing, I think that would look kick ass. Mm -hmm. um, and here's another question from Angelo. Uh, how long does it take you to make a complete art and when do you feel it's finished? That is actually a complicated question. <laughs> it's not, but it is. Because as artists, we usually just add and add and add and are never happy with our own art. Um, Usually I tend to force myself to be constrained by 10 hours. If it takes me more than 10 hours, like significantly, significantly more, then I just kind of scrap it mm -hmm. um, or just leave it there because it kind of, if I take more than 10 hours on, a, on an illustration, I kind of tend to go in circles and it ends up not looking that good because I kind of overcook it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, unless it's like a really complex uh, piece or a commission piece that I really need to work like 20 hours on, for the illustrations I um, put on my social media, I kind of tend to stick to 10 hours, give or take. As for when I know it's ready, uh, it's kind of a feeling. I'm not sure how to put it, but when when it kind of vibes right, that's when I know it's finished. Mm -hmm. And another popular question uh, is, uh, what are your favorite brushes? If there's a favorite brush set that you use, and if you use a a, a tablet. I do have favorite brushes. Um, they are in the project files that Mario uh, uploaded for us. And you can also get them on my Gumroad, they're free. Um, I also am working on an updated version of them, so keep an eye out for that. And yes, I am using a tablet. Um, I'm using a Wacom Cintiq 22 that I got relatively recently, like a year ago. And uh, until that, then I was using another Wacom, an Intuos. And um, now I'm really in love with the Cintiq because before that, before the before I got the Cintiq, the Intuos was good, but kind of, I don't know, my brain was a bit disconnected. It, it happens in some people, I guess. Uh, the brain is kind of disconnected between the you know, looking at the screen and drawing with your hands while not looking at it. So getting the Cintiq kind of made a whole lot of a difference where I could actually feel like I was drawing. And honestly, this is going to sound cliche, but my drawings were instantly better <laughs> just from being able to see my hand while drawing, that is. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, thank you. And uh, also, you mentioned about the files. We share the link on the chat panel. Uh, it's bit.ly forward slash sayarray dash assets. And uh, we'll also put uh, the link on the description of the video recording. We'll upload this uh, webinar in our YouTube channel, Graphicsly. So please take a look at that. And another question, 
is um, if you use uh, a lot of 3D assets on Clay Studio Paint for references. Um, you mean assets from the Clip Studio Marketplace or? Uh, well, actually it was about the 3D models, but if also if you use any other assets. Yeah, or, I do actually. Um, I do. Uh, like if you see all these bubbles here, they are these ones over here. You can still see my screen, yes? Yes. And uh, yeah, these are actually these bubbles over here. And um, I think in the Aquarius piece, that's it. I'm not sure. But yes, I do use um, I do use assets from the marketplace, at the Clip Studio marketplace, obviously. And um, uh, what was it about 3D models? Hey, Sorry? if you use them for references of lighting, poses. Yes, yes. Um, my software of choice for that is Blender because I kind of got used to it. Um, and I, uh, when I can't find a lighting reference um, online, I am forced to spend the time and uh, I do a grayscale reference, like a simple render with a simple lighting scenario in Blender, or you can you can do it in Clip Studio, you can do it in Magic Poser, any 3D software of your choice, really. And uh, yeah, I I do I do use that a lot, honestly, because you know, <laughs> references help. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And Alice, unfortunately, our time is limited and oh, no. the Q&A flew really fast. But one last uh, message, suggestion, tip to anyone who's uh, starting to work on the, the digital art uh, using Clip Studio Paint. Mm. Enjoy the marketplace. Enjoy the Clip Studio Marketplace. That's all I have to say. It's a <laughs> treasure trove. And don't be afraid to use all the references from over there. Like there's there's 3D models references, there's poses references, there's there's hands. Hands. We hate hands, don't we? Uh references over there. And just just enjoy the Clip Studio Marketplace. Just just, just enjoy it. Well, we are receiving tons of nice messages on our question panel, like Alicia, thanks for the master class of light and the assets. Your work is awesome. Amelia also says thank you. Rita Gale also thanks. So thank all of you who are watching us live. And so but sweet. thank you so much. Yes, but before we go, we just want to share one last bit of information. Let me share it to my screen. So many of you asked, and yes, this webinar has been recorded and we'll be uploading it to our YouTube channels, uh, Clip Studio Paint, that, and, sorry, Clip Studio Paint channel and Graphicsly channel. Learn more about Clip Studio Paint at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And if you want to follow uh, Sayo Ray on her socials, uh, it's the same name, Sayo Ray on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So with that, thank you so much, Alice. We really loved your presentation. Thank you too. It was amazing. It was amazing it presenting was... here. Thank you for the invitation and thank you everyone who attended. Thank you all of you and thank all of you who are watching the recording on YouTube. So please stay tuned in our socials for more um, webinars, promotions, tutorials and tips of Clip Studio Paint at Graphicsly and Clip Studio Paint official on Twitter or on Instagram. So see you next time. Bye-bye.